Hello Web Accessibility Heroes. Today we will make the HTML slideshow or Crowsal Web Accessible. Slideshows are a collection of items displaying one at a time. These are commonly used for image galleries, for products and for news headlines. You can find many tutorials on YouTube for amazing sliding transitions and cool animations. But in this video, we will focus on making a slideshow with navigation buttons web accessible. But why do we need to make them web accessible? Here's why. People using keyboards and assistive technologies can navigate between individual items easily to give better indications as to which item is currently shown and how to navigate between items. People can pause animations in case they are distracted. And lastly, people who need more time to read can pause the animations, providing them with sufficient time to read and understand the carousal content. With that, welcome to the channel and if you are new to this channel, I am Skill Singh and on this channel, I help you build web accessible applications and share awesome UI and ADA tips. Now if you like this style of videos, then please do me a favor by subscribing to this channel and smash that thumbs up button to help other developers implement web accessibility. Now let's cover what a web accessible slideshow must have. First, a user should be able to pause carousal movements because it can be too fast or distracting, making the text harder to read. All functionality, including navigation between carousal items, must be operatable by keyboards. Changes to the carousal item must be communicated to all users, including screen reader users. And lastly, the keyboard position specifically for the focus is managed in a reasonable fashion. Now let's code together to make slideshows or carousals web accessible. You can find the complete source code on my GitHub. W3Schools is actually having a very good example of slideshows or the bootstrap carousal. We will be making this carousal web accessible, which is having the captions as well. What I have done is I added this code which is having the captions to the slides and I made a couple of changes. I changed the images that we are using and added a more meaningful alternate text. So in our application we are having a carousal which is having three different images. Whenever the image changes or the slide changes, we are changing the captions and we are having these three indicators at the bottom and they change as per the current slide. And when you hover over it, it stops in the slideshow and it also has the left and the right arrow keys. When you press on it, you will be moving to the next slide. Now, this looks perfect for the sighted users. But what about the non-sighted users who depends completely on the keyboard keys? So when I start tabbing, my focus is going to the left arrow. I tab again, it moves to the right arrow. But when I tab next, it's going to my URL bar instead of going to these indicators which takes away the accessibility feature of the end user to change the slide by clicking on these indicators and that's the first step that we are gonna fix for that let's go ahead and make some modifications to this section this is the main container which is having the indicators that are displayed on this slideshow followed by the wrapper class for the actual slides or the images that we are displaying and finally, we have the left and the right arrows at the bottom of this section. The first thing that comes to mind is why don't we add tab index like tab index equals to zero so that these indicators get the tabbing focus while the user is tabbing. So I have added tab index to the first li tag. Now let me go into my browser, start tabbing. My focus is on the left arrow, then it goes to the right arrow, then it goes to the browser's URL, it goes into the browser's URL section and then it comes back to this list which is a wrong sequence. It should come from left, right and then to this li tag. Since we have the focus on this li tag, let me press enter key to make sure that the first slide is getting selected. So when I'm pressing enter but nothing is happening on the page and that's because Bootstrap reserved its right that these carousal indicators are handled by their framework and we are not allowed to override them. To overcome this, we have to write a custom class so that we can have our own styling and then we can add the on-click events for these list items. 
let's copy this entire section let's remove it from here and let's put it at the end where our main div ends so this is my container div for the carousel immediately after this i'll be putting it and i have already written a custom class that we can use for these indicators so let's copy this class come back here and replace this class with the custom class let's save this now you will not see the indicators because we have to add few more elements so now let's go ahead and do that first instead of having this tab index i'll be using an anchor tag so within this li let's add an anchor tag so we'll say anchor tag href hash and let's end it let's keep it empty for now and see we have our first indicator for active class we'll be having this solid circle now let me go ahead and add these anchor tags to the other li tags that we have now that we have added a custom carousel indicators and we are having an anchor tags within it now if i start tabbing my focus will go to the first indicator and when you press enter on it it takes you to the first slide similarly if i go to the next one it's going to the next slide but one thing is off if you see we are currently on the third slide but the indicator is still on the first one so we need to move these indicators as the slides are shown on the page let's define the relationship between these indicators and the actual slides that we have so let's copy this data hyphen slide to attribute and put it to the three different items that we are displaying so let's go ahead and do that so this is our first div this div let's add data attribute slide to zero and for this next item it should be set to one and finally for this item we'll set it to two let's write a script section here we should write all this code when our document is in the ready state so we'll say document dot ready and this should have a function we'll say function and then we'll write our code within this now we need to find an event when this slide has actually happened or the slide is actually shown on the page so first of all we need to find the actual carousel on which it needs to be applied we'll find this element we'll say a dollar and we have to use hash because we have my carousel as an id and then we will be writing dot on event so we'll define some event here and it should make a function let's head over to the bootstrap documentation and this is the event type that i that i'm using here so this event is fired when the carousel has completed its slide transition which means when the new slide has already appeared in the mainframe so let's paste it here and within this we have to write the code what we need to do is we need to find the li tags and then we have to remove the class which is active so we'll say remove active class from all the li tags and to be very specific because your page can have multiple li tags let's define the scope so you want to find the li tags which are within the custom carousel indicators okay so we have removed it now we need to remove this class active and move it to the li tags which are in the active state and for that we need to find an li tag with a specific data attribute so it's really easy you just need to pass the attribute that you are looking for and this needs to be dynamic so we need to pass the element here or the id and we will find which slide is actually having the active class so if i inspect this element so this class act is actually toggling among three different devs and this is how we'll get to know which item we needs to put focus to and we have used data attributes which will help us to find that element now let's go back to our code what we need to do is we need to find that dev which is having the class active so we'll say dot item dot active and for that we need to find the attribute and finally we need to add a class which should be active let's save this and see how it behaves in our browser so first indicator is having the solid white color and when the slide changes it's moving to the second indicator and finally to the third one and when i'm pressing on the right arrow key 
the changes are getting reflected so we need not write any separate code for it next let's add some aria attributes which are viable to make this indicator web accessible so first thing first we need to add a role to this ordered list and we can say it's a list it's a collection of list items and for each li tag we need to add a role again so it should be a list item and same thing needs to be done for all the li tags that we have in this section and to convey more meaningful content to the end user we should use aria label for these hyperlinks because these hyperlinks are the one which are getting the focus we can say aria label equals to move to the first slide and let's do it for all the anchor tags that we have within this section and instead of first we'll say second and then we can say third next what we need to do is we need to start and stop these animations using the keyboard key so that people have more time to read what is displayed on the page one way the bootstrap itself is handling is when you hover over it but what about the people who are using keyboards so let's go ahead and add another element which is a play pause button what we want to do is we want to display it before these indicators now let's go ahead and do that so within this ordered list only let's create another li tag which will be having role as list item let's give some id to it we'll say play pause button and let's give a class as pause by default because when we will load the page your slider is in the active state and within this again we need to have an anchor tag and that anchor tag should have an href of hash and then we should have aria label and this should be set to pause slide show and once you save it we will see that the changes are reflecting with the css that i already have in this slideshow.css file you will you can access the complete source code from my github so don't worry about the css at this point of time let's head back to our html now what we need to do is we need to write a click event for this anchor tag so that we can start and stop the animations on the slideshow and for that let's head to our javascript sanction let's write the on click event for this anchor tag so let's find that anchor tag first to identify it let's use this id for the li tag we can say hash play pause button and then find the anchor tag and dot on we have to write the click event handler which should have a function and then we'll write the javascript within this what we need to do is we need to find whether this button is having a pause class or a play class and we need to toggle it and based on that toggle we will pause or play this slider so let's go ahead and do that we'll say f dollar this li tag is having a class and that class that we currently gave is pause then we need to do something else which is the play scenario what we need to do within this is we have to stop the carousal so let's find that carousal first we'll say dollar find that carousal so this is the id for my carousal here and you can use the bootstrap events which is carousal and then you have to pass the options that you want to do so in this case we want to pause it let's save this when i click on it my slideshow should be in the stopped state now but this pause button should be converted to a play button to give a good indication to the end user and that we can achieve is by changing the class from pause to play find this element which is the li tag and for this we have to say remove the existing class which is pause and then add another class which is play let's save this and it should move to the next slide and once you click on this button it's changing to a play button giving a good indication to the end user that okay you have stopped the slideshow now you have to press it again to start the slideshow again 
and that's where we have to use the else scenario so let's simply copy this section because we'll be making minor tweaks here let's put it in the next line instead of pause we have to say start the cycle again and instead of removing the class pause we have to remove the class play and add the pause class let's save this and see it in our browser this time i'll be using the keyboard keys so my focus moves to the left arrow right arrow then to the first button i'm pressing enter it changes to the play button and it stopped the slideshow now if i press enter key again it changes the icon from play to pause and your animations or the slideshow starts again now there is one more thing that we need to do so if you remember we gave an aria label pause slideshow we need to update this to a more meaningful aria label when it's in this paused state so what we can do is we need to find that element first we'll find it and instead of la tag we have to do it for the anchor tag and set the attribute and aria label is the attribute that we want to update and we should say play slide show and similarly when it's in the playing state or when it's in the active state we have to update the at aria attribute to pause slide show now let's inspect this element so this is currently having pause slide show now let me go ahead and click on it it's updating the aria label to play slide show and when i press play again it says pause slide show and the last thing that we need to do is that whenever this slides changes the end user should be informed about the new caption which is coming for the image and that we can use by creating a div which is having area live so let's go ahead and do that immediately after these indicators let's have a div with a class sr only we want only the screen readers to know about it and let's give some id to it we'll say announce updates and then have aria iphone live and we can set it to polite now let's grab this element and we are gonna use this event handler when the change has actually happened on the page what we need to do is we want to update this div with the actual captions that are displayed on the slide so let's find the div first hash and then we want to set the text and this text should actually hold the actual caption of the slide that is currently displayed within the viewport and for that let's create a variable let's say let current caption equals to and for this variable we have to find that string or find that caption so let's see how we can do that let me inspect this element so this section is actually having a div which is having a class as active so we can find what is the active slide and find those elements so let's go ahead and do that dot item dot active i need to find the div which is having a class as item and a class which is active and within this we need to find few more elements if you see within this section we are having an h3 tag and a paragraph tab so we need to find the h3 tag here dot text so and finally let's pass it to this text function let's save this let's find that element which is this one so once the slide changes it's it's updating this div with the h3 tag which that we just added let's rename this variable to current caption header and let's copy this entire string and then let's rename the second variable to current caption details and instead of h3 let's find the paragraph tag now we have to update the parameter that i was passing here and then had some space in between and then finally the current caption details let's save this head back to our browser and look for what updates we are getting in this div as the slide changes so for the second slide it says cardio to build stamina 
we need to add some space so that it's more readable let me save this and head back to our browser again as the slide changes it says crunches to strengthen your core next let's run the x dev tool to see for the accessibility issues on the slider let's go to the dev tools and within this we have the x dev tool extension added once i click on scan all of my page it will list down all the issues that are present so it says heading level should only increase by one which means on this page i'm having this as h1 and immediately after h1 it's moving on to h3 which is for this section so what we can do is let's go back to our code and instead of h3s we can move it to h2s so let's find all these h3s i'll replace them at once with h2s come back to our browser run the x dev tool again and we should not have any x dev tool errors within this well that's it we made a slideshow or a carousel in html web accessible next let's have a listen how jaws interacts with our carousel page has two regions two headings and six links main region previous same page link next same page link Pause slideshow link. Move to the first slide link. Move to the second slide link. Move to the third slide link. Move to the second slide link. Move to the first slide link. Play slideshow link. Enter. Cardio to build stamina. Crunches to strengthen your core. Push ups to strengthen your upper body. You can also make the jaws announce the alternate text as well when we are changing the slides. Let me know in the comment section if you face any issues. Please comment for what purpose are you using slideshows in your application and watch this video to explore how JAWS interacts with HTML elements. See you in the next video. Till then, keep coding.